Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome to St. Albans. Our service of Holy Eucharist begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the letter to the Glossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Psalm 49, please read responsibly by half verse. Hear this. 
all you peoples, hearken, all you who dwell in the world. You are My mouth shall speak of wisdom. And my heart shall meditate on the I will incline my ear to a proverb. And set forth my will upon the heart. Why should I be afraid in evil days? When the wickedness of those who evil is around. The wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods. We can never ransom ourselves. For the, God, of our life. For the ransom of our life is so great that we should never have enough to pay. In order to live forever and ever, and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation. Though they call the land after their own Even though honored, they cannot live forever.
The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The parable of the rich fool. We are introduced to a man who was materially blessed by God already. His land produced plentifully. From a businessman's point of view, the rich fool had a strategic and excellent plan. But from the point of view of being rich towards God, it had problems. First, his plan didn't concern furthering God's will. Secondly, he trusted his future with his accumulated wealth. Are you rich towards God? Are the things that you do equip you for your pleasure and for your sake and welfare? Or are you doing things that are pleasing to God, allowing his light to shine through you? Are you striving more and more to demonstrate that you are made in the image of God? Do you say, today or tomorrow, I will go and do such and such and spend time here and there and trade this and make a profit? Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are just a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, I will live and do this and do that. God must have first place in your plans. We are told it is not errant to plan ahead. Saving money isn't wrong, but don't place your confidence in your savings. Instead, have faith that God will provide. Additionally, we are also to bless others with our blessings, not to pile them up and store them up in barns. You see, there are blessings for the ones who seek God because God does great and unsearchable things, marvelous things without number. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we must be rich towards God, putting him first in our plans. We are first to line up our wills with his. We are to cultivate a relationship with God. I am reminded of a song, Tripling Billies, a song made famous by the Dave Matthews Band. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow will die. If you are not intentionally rich towards God as much as you are towards your own comfort, you may miss heaven. Jesus asked two rhetorical questions in the Gospel of Mark. For what does a man benefit to gain the whole world with its pleasure and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul and eternal life in God's kingdom? The human soul is a priceless treasure. It is the real you. In fact, the Bible teaches that your soul is more valuable than anything in the whole world. And yet many people sell their souls for what surely are petty bargains. The Bible teaches us that we are body, soul, and spirit. We also see in 1 Peter 1 that a great price was paid for our souls. Maybe not in an earthly sense, but the value of something is determined by the price paid for it and by whom it was paid. Jesus died on the cross for our souls. His death pays the penalty for the sins of those who believe in him by faith. But just as the man in the parable neglected and lost his soul, it is possible for each of us to lose our souls too. Let's take a closer look at the parable of the rich fool. The rich fool had selfish plans, busy pursuing the comforts of life 
and not pursuing God. He wanted to build bigger barns, but God brought in a new perspective. The rich fool wouldn't even live to build bigger barns. He made plans only for this life and not after. God was not in his life. He did not consider God at all. Hence, Luke calls him the rich fool. Jesus wants us to see things from a new perspective. In the gospel, he told the young man who came to him, watch out, guard yourselves against every form of greed, for not even when one has an overflowing abundance of life or is it derived from it from his possessions. Jesus advises us not to worry about earthly possessions. We can lose ourselves if we plan only for ourselves. We were created to pursue a relationship with God. Riches or sins can never satisfy our souls. In the parable of the rich fool, God called the protagonist a fool. Someone who had amassed a great wealth but was poor towards God. Oswald Sanders said, nothing is wrong with seeking great things, but what is wrong is seeking things only for yourself. Jesus reminded us, we need to remember God, the source of all our blessings. God wants us to invest in things that have eternal value. We must invest our lifetime, our talents, and our knowledge in the work of his kingdom. Live life in the eternal light, and we shall be greatly blessed. All that the rich farmer has will not go to him, and it will not go with him. Life without God is meaningless. Meaningless. Man thinks he can find true fulfillment in this world. We want to have plenty of good things laid up for many years, and then we can take it easy and enjoy life, drink and be merry. But Jesus says true fulfillment can only come through our relationship with God. Security in life does not lie in barns but in our relationship with God. Secondly, the rich fool had wrong intentions. He was filled with pride and self-reliance. He was a self-made man. Charles Spurgeon said, there are two sins of a man that are bred in the bone, self-dependence and self-exaltation. The real issue here is not our possessions, rich or poor. The issue here is our focus, our focus on ourselves only. Do not neglect to do good, to contribute to the needy of the church as an expression of your fellowship, for such sacrifices are always pleasing to God. It is not a one-time event, but we must do it again and again and again. Remember, at the close of life, the question will not be, how much have you got, but how much have you given? Not how much have you won, but how much have you done for the least of them? Not how much have you saved, but how much have you sacrificed? Now, not how much you have honored, but how much have you served as the example Jesus provided. Thirdly, the rich fool had unacceptable goals. He had set a goal of assuming that he would be around to enjoy his wealth. Just like the rich fool, most of us don't realize we're just one breath away, one heartbeat away, one accident away from eternity. Like the rich fool, no one is ever prepared for that moment until they have made peace with God. Here's a story I want to share with you. A pastor was invited to dinner 
in the home of a wealthy man in Texas. After the meal, the host led the pastor to a place where he could get a good view of the surroundings. Pointing to the oil wells, 25 years ago, I had nothing. Now, as far as you can see, all is mine. Looking in the opposite direction at his spalling fields of grain, that's all mine. Turning east toward huge herds of cattle, he bragged, they're all mine. Then pointing to the west, a beautiful forest. That's all mine, too. He paused, expecting the pastor to compliment him on his great success. The pastor, however, placing hand on one shoulder and pointing upward, simply said, how much do you have in that direction? He hung his head and said, I never thought about that. When God entered, the rich fool realized that there was one thing he did not prepare. He made an excellent plan for his crops, save for the future, to enjoy himself. In fact, he'd done many things well, but death was not in his planning book. We are reminded today in Ecclesiastics, it was meaningless, meaningless, utterly meaningless a chasing after the wind. For you see, a person does not know when his or her time is coming. What if you heard these words today? Today you will die. Are you ready for that? Will you be able to give an account of how you have raised or are raising your family? Can you give an account of what you're doing with your talents and abilities? What about giving an account of how you're spending your time and your energy? What about giving an account of what you've done with your money and wealth that God has blessed you with? Are you ready to give an account of how you're using your body and managing your appetites? Are you discipling and sharing your testimony and the good news with your neighbors. After we are born, there are two things that are certain, taxes and death, as we were born to die. From dust we will form, and to dust we shall return. Someday there's gonna be a knock at our life's door. Death will be waiting outside, and you and I must answer the door. And soon after that, we must give what we have offered in this life. And so please believe, I plan to be prepared. I hope you plan to be prepared through a relationship with God. Because to be present from the body is to be, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Only being rich towards God in this life can we expect to spend eternity in God's presence. And since we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we will be raised with Christ, so we must set our hearts on things above and not on earthly things. Put to death those things that are earthly nature we must rid ourselves of those things like anger and rage and malice and slander and filthy language from my lips. We must put on the new self and be renewed in our knowledge in the image of God, our creator. What will be your account of how rich you were to God? Please hear me. It is not for me to judge you or for you to judge me, as each of us must be preparing diligently to get our individual counts of being rich to God ready for the sharing of that day. Beloved, I implore you, choose you this day to have a relationship with God. This day 
and each and every day going forward. How will you be rich towards God? Amen. Turning now to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form four, found on page 388 in our Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the Vacation Bible School attendees and volunteers. Lord, in your mercy, Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Please join me in reading the names on our prayer list, found on page 11 of our worship bulletin. Together we pray for Anne, Bob, Charleston, Donna, Ellie, Aaron, 
Gary, Hillary, Jackie, Jeannie, Jim, Judy, Ken, Ken, Linda, Melissa, Pat, Ralph, Rebecca, Ricky, Sandy, Stephanie, Steve, Wilson. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Michael Biglin and Gray Little, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Turning now to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, St. Albans. Good morning. Wonderful to see all of you here this day. Welcome. Welcome to everyone who's here in the nave. Welcome also to everyone who's joining us online. Hi, guys. And welcome to any newcomers who are with us today. We are so happy you are here. We look forward to getting to know you better. Everyone is invited to stay for coffee hour, and I think there's homemade cookies out there, so please stay and enjoy some refreshments and fellowship after the service. Um, if you are new and are interested in getting connected with St. Albans, you can either fill out the newcomer notebook, which is through those doors, the ushers will show you where to find it, um, or you can scan the QR code on the back of your bulletin, and that will pop up a little online form you can fill out so that we can be in touch, get you connected to our newsletter, all that good stuff. Um, just some announcements this morning. First, thank you to Marie Hitzman again for um, leading our music while John Bailey is away. We're grateful. Thank you also to Valerie 
Colbert for her sermon this morning. You may not realize this because she's so polished, but that's her first sermon as an ordained person, as a deacon. Uh, and just a note, you, you probably saw as you came in that we are, Mecklenburg County is orange on the CDC map. So according to our vestry policy, that does mean we're wearing these. Um, hopefully those numbers will go back down again and we can, um, will be short lived. But thank you all for your cooperation as we try to protect one another as the numbers around us are up. Um, Things coming up this week, as you heard in the prayers, is Vacation Bible School. It's always such a joyful week. Courtney has planned an amazing cash, uh, Compassion Camp experience. We got a great group of kiddos coming for it. Um, we do. We could use some help after church with setup. We're doing most of. VBS outside this year. It'll be out back, and I think there are some picnic tables and maybe some tents to be put up, some things to be set up and moved around. So if you are able and have um, a few extra minutes after church and some energy, uh, if you wouldn't mind heading back to the back of, of, of the, the grounds there, right, up, right out that way, um, Courtney would love to have your help this morning setting up so that we have a great week for our Vacation Bible School kids. Um, also coming up quickly on August 13th is the back to school blast. And um, so we are, we've been collecting funds for sh a new pair of shoes for every kid who comes to the back to school blast. Gethsemane Baptist Church is one of partners and they're the organizing church behind this event. And they really depend on St. Albans for those funds for the new shoes. So as the shoe box comes around uh, this morning, if you're able to drop something in it, that's wonderful. You can also give online. All the details are in your bulletin. And then of course, uh, we are still collecting school supplies that you can drop off and, um, and you can still volunteer to serve on the morning of the event too. All the details again are in your bulletin on that. Thank you all so much who have already contributed to the Back to School Blast. It is such a joy to partner uh, with Gethsemane and other groups in our community for the 15th year in a row now, uh, which is really cool and exciting. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
service continues with the Holy Eucharist, the Great Thanksgiving Prayer A, beginning on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, 
constancy and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and rose for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.